I'm the Canon RP. And I'm the Sony a7 III. Who cares if you're the Sony a7 III? I'm the Sony a7 III. What are you talking about? I'm the best full frame camera on the market. Yeah, if you don't mind yellow color. Yeah, well, if you don't mind orange color. No, I'm the cheapest full frame camera ever made. Yeah, but you try shooting 4K video on that sensor, you'll be in micro four thirds. My mom's tougher than your mom. Yeah, but I have sensor stabilization. I've got digital stabilization. Digital stabilization. We will crush your puny electronics company. The Canon RP versus the Sony a7 III. Our camera comparison next here on The Slanted Lens. A special shout out to Borrow Lenses who sponsors these segments here at The Slanted Lens. So let's get to our first segment, the picture quality test. Boy, these two images are sharp. These lenses are sharp. Yeah, super nice lenses. I mean, they should be for the size. Yeah, they should be. <laughs> Got a trash can in front of your, of your camera. <laughs> but yeah, really sharp. I love it. I love the tonality of both images. The Sony, as usual, I had to lift the exposure by about a third of a stop. Yeah, we expect that. It's always under. But man, they, they look really similar and they both look really good. Canon's a little warmer, I think. So now it's time for our dynamic range test. We're going to test these two cameras to see how they hold the highlights and the shadows here in the alley. Uh, usually we like to do this by exposing at a proper exposure for her skin tone on the first exposure, and then we do overexposed by increments of one stop up to four, and then underexposed by increments of one stop down to minus four stops. We correct those images in post and see how flexible they are, see how the color, what the color does, and the highlights, and the shadows, and the grain, and all that stuff. So here's our proper exposure. Um, everything looking really nice. The, the wall's a little bit hot on the Canon on the left side, but holding just fine. Minus one stop. So really what we're looking out for here is when is noise gonna start appearing in the shadows? On the shadow side of her face or in her skirt. Minus one stop should usually be no trouble for digital it cameras. Looks like it's pretty good. Although I'm starting to see something on the Canon on the left there. And yeah. this is at minus uh, two stops, right? Minus two stops, I'm already seeing some noise from the Canon which is kind of telling me maybe this isn't the camera to take out and shoot in the you know, direct side light sun scenario. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. At two, minus two stops, yeah, it's already showing up. Minus three stops, definitely heavy grain there. Heavy grain on the Canon. Boy, not S much Sony's nicer. showing on a little bit, but it's not. But any, much yeah. better than the Canon here. Minus four stops, we get, oh my. Oh man, that Canon is just The Canon just, just apart. fell apart. The Sony still looks pretty good for minus four stops. a Little bit grainy, but not terrible. I wanna compare here, I wanna pull up the Canon minus two and the Sony minus four. I feel like these are almost more comparable. Sony's a little more grainy, but uh, but your two stops different there, but not by much, very yeah, similar. Very similar. Boy, I mean, that means there's two different, two stops difference in the dynamic range of those two sensors. Yeah, even minus three stops on the Canon is more grainy than minus four stops on the Sony. So you're you're talking two stop difference in the shadows. This is probably the biggest difference we've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here we have the plus one stop image and I still feel like the, the wall's a little brighter on the Canon, but I mean, you look at the ground over here, kind of by those doors in the background and it's clipping hard on the Canon. Oh, you're right. It's it really not, is. You see detail on the Sony. It's on not the clipping Sony. on the Sony. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Sony's handling it well. You're absolutely right. Plus two stops here. The Canon definitely blowing out the brick really hard. The Sony, also blowing out, but you do have a little bit more detail. Her face still looks good, and we metered for her face. So at plus two stops, you're still okay. It's getting a little yellow on the Canon. Yeah, yeah. the color has shifted on the Canon quite a, a bit. bit. It, yeah, it's much nicer have, on the Sony. Still have detail there. At plus three stops, neither one's doing great, but the uh, Canon, to my eye, is definitely definitely worse. But they both shifted yellow now at this point. Yeah. You know, yeah. Canon a little more than the Sony definitely and the white wall on the side has become a gray patch. It's starting to become gray with the Canon. It's just straight up a little more white yeah. with the Sony. I would say they're pretty close in the highlight dynamic range, maybe a third of a stop, half stop advantage to Sony. Mm -hmm. So overall, you're looking at you know two and a half stops of flexibility when it comes to post-processing between these cameras. If you're looking to shoot in just bright sunlight all the time, if you're shooting sports or things like that, then I would recommend the Sony over the Canon. Yeah, I agree. Just a quick note here, on the minus one stop photo, you can see just above the color checker on her chest, there is a little bit of moiré on the Sony. And if you zoom in, there's a tiny, tiny slight bit on yeah. the Canon, but not nearly as bad. On the Sony, it's actually quite noticeable. It's, it's like a different shirt. Yeah, it's really noticeable. That kind of texture really, it shows uh, for a sensor. I mean, there's a lot of texture in that uh, sweater and it's really hard for a camera to hold that. 
So boy, the Sony is, is quite a bit worse than the Canon there. ISO, we started a little lower this time on the ISO test because I always feel like for stills, I don't like being above, uh, I don't like being above 100 if I don't have to, but I'll go to 320 sometimes um, if I'm in a pinch. But, <laughs> but at 200, these sensors both seem very clean to me. Mm -hmm. You really do. You don't see a grain issue at 400. Yeah, I feel like it still looks pretty Still clean. pretty good. I'd be pretty, pretty comfortable with 400. 800. Canon, I, I feel like I'm starting to feel a little more texture on the Canon. I agree. I, f I feel like the Canon's starting to show a little more, a little bit of texture, a little bit of grain. 1600 that the Canon definitely, definitely. has, definitely has grain. We go to the eye and you can see in the eye, like the iris and the whites of her eyes and stuff, it's starting to muddy up the detail yeah. there. Sony still looks pretty good. It really does. Not At 1600, bad. the Sony does not look bad. 3200, this is usually the limit for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> This is where it gets kind of chunky. Well, Canon's yeah, they're both gritty, very, yeah. Canon's very gritty. On their skin, you just start to see it. There's, there's yeah. this sense of, of over sharpness or mm -hmm. something, you know? It mm -hmm. really is. 6400 ISO. I feel like at this point, they're starting to even out almost. Like the Sony also doesn't look that great. Yep. Um, 12,800, of course, can't really expect much at this point. Little more coarse on the Canon, but not by much. I would say if you're shooting in low light, the Sony would still probably be the way to go. Yeah. All right. Which surprises me about Sony. I've always felt like Canon was yeah, a little better with ISO than, than uh, Sony is, but not according to that test. Well, the sensor. Uh, so here we're going to do the autofocus test. We're going to have Jaden walk towards the camera an even pace from about 12 feet away and to like a full close up and see how they perform. The Sony historically has done very well. It has an eye autofocus, and the Canon has face tracking, which is good, and it has Canon's dual pixel, which is also very good. All right, so now we'll take a look at the autofocus, which is always very telling about technology and what the cameras can really do. And for still photography, this is pretty important. We're also gonna look at it with uh, regards to video here as well. The Autofocus, okay, so dual pixel autofocus on Canons is legendary. It's usually really good both for stills and photos. On set when we were shooting, I didn't feel like it was performing that well, but we get back here and it's nailing almost all the shots. It's just right on. I mean, these things are very sharp as yeah. she walks forward. And yeah, it's, it's a matter of making sure it's set up correctly because... Uh, yeah, it, it really is. It's important to make sure that it's set up correctly, but it, it's hitting the focus. All, almost all, they're really, out of all these images, there are really only, you know, three or four that are on the softer side, and even a couple of those are probably still acceptable. Now, the Sony also has really good autofocus, especially with their eye detect feature. I've always been really impressed by its performance. Yeah, I mean, it looks fabulous. I mean, that Sony is right on, it's hitting every time. It's, they all seem to suffer when you get into this transition from full body into uh, a tighter face shot. It seems yeah. like there's a point in there where I don't know if maybe she's moving quicker because it's so close to the camera. Yeah. There's something happening there that most of these cameras struggle and they both struggled at about the same place. I will say the drive, we talked about the drive speed and the drive speed on the Sony is much faster. It's double the speed that the Canon has, so that's nice. But the buffer is slower, so you can't really, t you can only drive that camera so hard before it just stops shooting, whereas a Canon you can just shoot forever, which is nice. Yeah. Just to keep it fair, we did the medium speed on the Sony, which is a little, even more fr more frames per second than the uh, Canon's the high Canon. speed. Still, yeah, it still does more frames. I actually prefer shooting the medium speed on the Sony because you can sh hold it, you can shoot a lot longer. So, I mean, autofocus wise, I think both of them perform really well. I. I don't know if I could pick a winner necessarily. No, I think they're very neck and neck with regards to that. They really are. So let's look at what autofocus looks like in video mode. This is becoming more and more popular with people. They're using the autofocus a lot. I mean, it used to be you never used autofocus yeah. for video, but I'm feeling pretty comfortable with the, some of the Canon products with regards to autofocus and the Sony products. So You know, to be honest, I, I've used the autofocus on several different Canon cameras, including the C200, the 5 Mark IV, the Canon R. I really liked it on the Canon R. It worked well. This camera, it just did not function as well. There were times I had to, I had to wait for it to find 
the subject or I had to kind of force it to focus on the subject. It wouldn't just pick it up automatically like it does with the other cameras. It was really driving me crazy. The Sony, on the other hand, you know, it's performed flawlessly. Flawlessly, it really did. Yeah. I mean, that's a very usable shot. As she walks, turns, and walks away. It's not searching, jumping, and, and it looks yeah. very good. Just let's just take a look at the crop factor because both of these cameras shoot 4K video, um, but there's a little bit of a crop on the Canon. So here's the yeah, just a little bit. A little bit. Here's a here's a Sony 4K, um, super clear. The A7 III is honestly one of the best. Um, interchangeable lens cameras on the market for video, I think. And now we'll go to the Canon, and that's the crop. Qu has, it, by that's the way, it has quite crop. a bit of rolling shutter too. If, you, if you're hand holding it, the Canon's pretty rough. Also, I just feel like the clarity isn't there with the Canon. It's subtle, but it just doesn't have quite as much crisp clarity as the Sony does. There's no problem shooting with cropped sensors for video. That's not a problem. People shoot with the GH5 all the time. They have a two times crop. But the problem here is that your glass is all designed for full frame. So you're just going to have, you're basically going to have to have two sets of lenses. Yeah. So let's talk about video, the, comparing these two. Oh, gosh. Video. Far. <laughs> I just, honestly, I just think the RP fell on its face with the video thing. It can't shoot 24 frames in 1080, and 1080 is the only way to shoot full <laughs> frame on it. So if you want to shoot 24 frames, you have to shoot in 4K, which is a 1.8 crop. And at that point, it's just like, why? What why? is the reason for not putting that on there? Don't I don't understand, understand that for a second. And granted, most people aren't wanting to shoot in 1080 anymore, but it's just, why, it's just one of those things that Canon does, and you just scratch your head and get frustrated. This is, on the other hand, a very, very accomplished video camera, it seems to me, because you have so many different frame rate options. Uh, it doesn't crop in when no. you go to, there's no crop factor whatsoever if when you go to 4K, and it's made to be a 4K camera. And as we saw, the image is super clear and crisp. I personally feel like I would rather get a cheaper body of some other brand or a used camera that will have more flexibility, more options for video than buying this brand new RP um, with a lens that just doesn't really meet all my needs. So there you have it, two cameras that really hit two different markets, even though they're both full frame, but it's gonna depend exactly on what you want and how you're gonna apply them. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. You're chipping your camera all the time. Which yeah. is what real professionals do. Absolutely. I, I know really exactly what that. they're talking about. <laughs>